This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words Section 1 Preface and Letter A To my dog, who first heard these lines and didn't run away mad, I reverently dedicate this tome. A fool may give a wise man counsel. Preface. In this age of the arduous pursuit of peace, prosperity, and pleasure, the smallest contribution to the gaiety, if not to the wisdom of nations, can scarcely be unwelcome. With this in mind, the author has prepared The Foolish Dictionary, not in serious emulation of the worthier and wordier works of Webster and Worcester, but rather in the playful spirit of the parodist, who would gladly direct the faint rays from his flickering candle of fun to the shrine of their great memories. With half a million English words to choose from, modesty has been the watchword, and the author has confined himself to the treatment of only about half a thousand. How wise, flippant, sober, or stupid this treatment has been, it is for the reader alone to judge. However, if from epigram, derivative, or pure absurdity there be born a single laugh between the lids, the laborer will accredit himself worthy of his hire. In further explanation it should be said that some slight deference has been made to other wits, and the definitions include a few quotations from the great minds of the past and present. As for the rest, the jury will please acknowledge a plea of guilty from Gideon Words. It's a long lane that has no ash barrel. A. Distilled waters run deep. Absinthe. From two Latin words, ad and sinistrum, meaning to the bad. If in doubt, try one. Old adage, absinthe makes the jag last longer. Abstinence. From the Persian ab, water, and stein or tankard. Hence, water tankard or water wagon. Accession a beheading process by which you may either win or lose a political job. Old spelling, axe session. Accident, a condition of affairs in which presence of mind is good, but absence of body better. Adamant, from Adam's aunt, reputed to be a hard character, hence anything tough or hard. Adore, from ad, annex, and or, meaning wealth. Example, Foreign nobles who marry American heiresses adore them. Advice. A commodity peddled by your lawyer and given away by your mother-in-law, but impossible to dispose of yourself. Famous as the one thing which it is more blessed to give than receive. Good advice. Something old men give young men when they can no longer give them a bad example. Adversity. A bottomless lake surrounded by nearsighted friends. Affinity, complementary term for your husband or your wife, sometimes a synonym for your finish. Afterthought, a tardy sense of prudence that prompts one to try to shut his mouth about the time he has put his foot in it. Age, something to brag about in your wine cellar and forget in a birthday book. The boast of an old vintage, the bugaboo of an old maid. Alcohol. A liquid good for preserving almost everything except secrets. Alderman, a political office known as the Crook's Road to Wealth. From English all and Greek derma meaning skin, all skin. Alimony, an expensive soothing syrup prescribed by the judge for a divorcee's bleeding heart. Old spelling, alle money. Allopathy, from English all, everybody and Greek pathos, pain, pain for everybody. Homeopathy, from Greek, homoios, same, and pathos, pain, just the same. Alphabet, a toy for the children found in books, blocks, pictures, and vermicelli soup. Contains 26 letters and only three syllables. Ancestors, the originators of the family tree. A remarkable sex paradox in which the ancestors are always the forefathers. Angel, 
a heavenly ineligible with wings and a harp, or an earthly eligible with money and a heart. Anterooms, euphemistic term for Canfield's New York City. Anti-imperialist, a patriot whose conscience works overtime. Antimony, a metallic substance discovered by Valentine in 1450 and now extensively used in the arts, particularly poker. Appendicitis, a modern pain costing about $200 more than the old-fashioned stomach ache. Argument, breaking and entering the ear, assault and battery on the brain, and disturbing the peace. Arson, derived from the Hebrew, see, insurance. Artist, commonly the individual long-haired and short-suited, having a positive pose and an uncertain income often shy on meal tickets but strong on technique and the price of tripe sandwiches. An artist may be a barber, a bootblack, a sergeant, or a paderewski. Athlete, a dignified bunch of muscles, unable to split wood or sift the ashes. Augur, one who bored the ancients with prophecies. Automobile, from English ought to and Latin moveo, to move a vehicle which ought to move but frequently can't. Automobilist, a landlubber on wheels made up to resemble a deep-sea diver. Fine feathers make fine feather beds. End of Section 1, Preface and Letter A How do you find this book? Any thoughts about the book or the author? Any suggestion for improvement? Please take a moment to share your thoughts in a comment. If you like it, share it with your friends who might enjoy it as well. Subscribe to keep in touch. Visit completeaudiobooks.com for more quality content. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alex Bowie The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Wirtz Section 2, Letter B A Stitch in Time Saves Embarrassing Exposure Baby, from Greek Babai Wonderful Parents are yet to be heard from who don't think theirs is a wonder. A nocturnal animal to which everyone in a sleeping car is eager to give a wide berth. Bachelor, from Latin baculus, a stick, unattached, hence an unattached man, which any lady may stick, stick to, or get stuck on. Backbiter, a mosquito. Balance, something wanted by bookkeepers and often lost by topers. May be found in a cash book or the tangaroo gate. Bandit, an outlaw. C. Alderman. Barber, a brilliant conversationalist who occasionally shaves and cuts hair. Synonym for phonograph. Bars, things found in harbors, hotels, fences, prisons, courts, and music. Those found in courts and music are full of beats. Bargain, a disease common to women caught in the Sunday papers and developed in department stores on Mondays. Symptoms, loud talk, pushing and shoving, a combination prize fight and football scrimmage. Old spelling, bark, gain. Baseball, a game in which the young man who bravely strikes out for himself receives no praise for it. Bat, senior partner of Bat Ball & Co., and never found without the rest of the firm, as it takes several highballs to make one short bat. Beach, a strip of sand skirted by water, covered with lady killers in summer, lifesavers in winter, or used as a heaven or haven for smacks the year around. Benedict, a married male. Benedictine, a married female. Benediction, their children. Birth, an aid to sleep, invented by Pullman, lower preferred. Birth, an aid to life, discovered by women, higher preferred. Bicycle skirt, an abbreviated garment that makes women look shorter and men longer. Bigamy, a form of insanity in which a man insists on paying three board bills instead of two. Biliousness. A liver complaint often mistaken for piety. Bill of fare. A list of eatables. Distinguished from menu by figures in the right-hand column.
Biograph, a stereo opticon picture taken with a chill and shown with tremors. Birdie, a term as one is apt to apply to a man she's playing for a J. Birthday, anniversary on one birth. Observed only by men and children. Blubber, the useful product of a dead whale, the useless product of a live baby. Blue, the only color we can feel. Invisible blue, a policeman. Blush, a temporary erythema and calorific effusions of the physiognomy aetiolized by the perceptiveness of the sensorium and a predicament of the inequilibrity from the sense of shame, anger, or other cause. Eventuating in the paresis of the vase morial Muscular filaments of the facial capillaries, whereby, being divested of their elasticity, they become suffused with a radiance emanating of the intimidated pricordia. Board, an implement for administering corporal punishment, used by mothers and landladies. The festive board may be a shingle, a hairbrush, a fish hair for breakfast, or a stewed pie supper. Bohemia, not on the map. A land flowing with canned milk and distilled honey and untroubled by consistency, convention, conscience, or cash. A land to which many are called and few are chosen. Bone, one dollar, the original price of a wife. Note, Adam, who had to give up one bone before he got Eve. Bonnets, a female head trouble, which is contracted at the latter part of Lent and breaks out on Easter. Boodle, money born of poor, but dishonest parents, and taken in by the Graft family. Borrow, to swap hot air for cold coin. Bower, a shady retreat in general. Bowery, a shady retreat in New York. Brace, security for the trousers. Bracer, security for the stomach. Bracelet, security for the pawnbroker. Brain, the top four in the apartment of the human block, known as the cranium, and kept by the Sarah sisters, Sarah Brum and Sarah Bellum, assisted by the medulla oblongata. All three are nervous, but are always confined to their cells. The brain is all done in gray and white and furnished with light and heat, hot or cold water, if desired, with regular connections to the outside world by way of the spinal circuit, usually occupied by the intellect bros, thoughts and ideas, as an intelligence office, but sometimes sublet to jag, hangover, and co. Brand, something carried on the hip, either by beast or man can be found on the outside of a short red steer or on the inside of a long black bottle. Brass band, a clever though somewhat complicated arrangement for holding a crowd together. Brick, an admirable person made of the right sort of clay and processing plenty of sand, what your friends call you before you go to the wall, but never afterward. Brimstone, a little bit of haze which finds its match on the earth and smells to heaven. Better to strike it here than in the hereafter. Brevity, a desirable quality in the 4th of July oration, but not in the fireworks. Broke, a word expressing the ultimate condition of one who is too much bent on speculating. Bomb, a fallen tough. Bump, a tough fall. Bunko, the art of disseminating knowledge in rural districts. Bystander, one who is injured in a street fight. People who live in glass houses should dress in the dark. End of section 2, letter B. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Alex Patterson. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Wirtz. Letter C. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Try an incubator. Cab. A fare for a drive. Cabby. Driver for a fare. Catchination. The hysterical ha-ha. Synonym for carry nation. Caddy, a small boy employed at a liberal stipend to lose balls for others and find them for himself. Café, a place where the public pays the proprietor for the privilege of tipping the waiters for something to eat. Cajole, verb, transitive, from Greek, kalos, beautiful, and English, jolly, to jolly beautifully. Calcium, an earthly light that brightens even the stars. Cannibal, a heathen hobo who never works but lives on other people. Captive, from Latin caput, head, and English vacate, or empty. To empty the head. Note, women who have captivated men. Cape, a neck in the sea. Caper, 
a foot in the air. Carnegieitis, a mania for burning money, contracted in a Pennsylvania blast furnace, developed in a Scottish castle, and now epidemic in American public libraries. Cart, verb transitive, to take off. Cartoon, to take off. Cauliflower, a cabbage with a college education. Calvary, the arm of the military service that engages in the real hostilities. Cemetery, the one place where princes and paupers, porters and presidents, are finally on the dead level. Champagne, the stuff that makes the world go round. Chair, four-legged aid to the injured. Charity, four-handed aid to the indignant. Chauffeur, a man who is smart enough to operate an automobile, but clever enough not to own one. Christian, a member of any orthodox church. Christmas, a widely observed holiday on which the past nor the future is of so much interest as the present. Chump, anyone whose opinion differs radically from ours. Cigarette, a weed whose smoke, some say, should never be inhaled, and still more insist should never be exhaled. Cinder, one of the first things to catch your eye in traveling. Civilization, an upward growth or tendency that has enabled mankind to develop the college yell from what was once only a feeble war whoop. Collector, a man whom few care to see, but many ask to call again. College, from French collier, pasted or stuck, and étude, study, a place where everyone is stuck on study. Colonel, a male resident of Kentucky. See Colonel. Compliment, verb transitive, from English con, hot air, and Latin pleo, to fill, hence to fill with hot air. Complexion, color for the face, from English complex, difficult, and shun to avoid, to avoid difficulty, by it of the druggist. Commendation, from English con, a josh, and mend, to fix up, hence a fixed up josh. Conductor, from English coin, and Latin duco, to command, one who commands the coin. Conscience, the fear of being found out. Cook, a charitable institution, providing food and shelter for policemen. Corps, a bunch of fighters, distinctly better corps found in apples, and corps found in arms. Corset, from French, corps, shape, and sec, rough, rough on the shape. Cosmetic, a new face maker, from Greek, cosmos, order, and English, medic, or doctor, ordered by the doctor. See complexion. Cot, a snooze for one. Cotillion, a dance for eight. Credit, something for nothing. Creditor, something with nothing. Credulity, a feminine virtue and a masculine vice. Cremation, a means of disposing of the dead, likely to become very popular, especially with women who are so fond of having the last retort. Critic, a wet blanket that soaks everything it touches. Crook, one who exceeds the speed limit in Law and Order Avenue, a misfit in the straight and narrow way. Crow, a bird that never complains without cause. Culture, a degree of mental development that produces tailor-made women, fantastically sheared poodles, and dock-tailed horses. Cupid, a driver of sharp darts. Cupidity, a driver of sharp deals. Cynic, a man who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. All work and no play makes Jack a dead one. End of letter C. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Alex Patterson. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words. Letter D. Out of fight, out of coin. The Pugilist's Plaint. Dabble, verb, transitive, to play in water, dabble in stocks, same thing. Duchessen, a low-down dog. Dance, a brisk physical exercise invented by St. Vitus. Dates, a fruit commonly plucked from the family tree and spread on the leaves of history. Distinctly better, dates and peaches which are often associated. Dead, without life, see Boston. Deader, Pompeii. Deadest, Philadelphia. Deadbeat, one who makes a soft living by sponging it. Debt, a big word beginning with O, which grows bigger the more it is contracted. Delighted, an Oyster Bay localism, derived from delighted. 
Patent and dramatic rights to this word are, until March 4th, 1905, the exclusive property of T. Roosevelt, Esquire. Subsequent editions of the Foolish Dictionary will define the word at length. Delegate, from English dally to loaf, and French gate spoiled, a spoiled loafer. Demagogue, from Greek demos people, and English gag, one who gags the people. Democracy, a mysterious country bounded on the east by Richard Onley, on the west by Willie Bryan, on the north by Dave Hill, and on the south by Benny Pitchfork Tillman. Den, a cavity. Dent, to punch. Dentist, one who punches the face and fills cavities. Deuce, an honest card. In fact, the only one that is never known to beat Trey. Devil, an old rascal mentioned in the Bible, now reported engaged to Mary McLean. Diamond, a bright gem, the sparkle of which sometimes renders a woman stone blind to the defects of the man proffering it. Diary, an honest autobiography, a good keepsake, but a bad giveaway. Dignity, a narrow, unstable bearing, which metal spindle shanks try to stand upon when they have no other support. Dickens, an author, polite term for the devil. Die, an effect. Diet, frequently a cause. Dimple, a ripple in the gentle whirlpool of a woman's pretty smile. Diplomat, an international liar, with an elastic conscience and a rubber neck. Discount, something often sold in place of goods. Discretion, an instinctive perception that enables us to say, Oh, shut up, to the small, weak man, and, I beg your pardon, but I do not entirely agree with your views, to the large, strong one. Dive, a gambler's retreat. Dividends, a gambler's reward. Divorce, normally separation of husband and wife from the bonds of matrimony. In the vicinity of Newport, it is frequently a legal formula that immediately precedes a fashionable wedding. Doc, a place for laying up. Doctor, one who lays you up. Dream, what a man may call a woman, though a pill may have suggested it. Sweethearts are dreams because they seldom come true. Wives, because they are often a nightmare, and both, because they go by contraries. Draft, draught. What gives a cold, cures a cold, and pays the doctor's bill. Drop stitch, a kind of feminine hosiery designed to prevent the men from paying too much attention to the open work, peekaboo, shirtwaist. Drum, something noisy and made to beat. Drummer, something noisy but impossible to beat. From the Greek, dreamus, meaning sharp, hence something sharp that always carries its point and sticks whoever it can. Dust, mud with the juice squeezed out. Dynamite, the peroration of an anarchist's argument. Dyspepsia, a good foundation for a bad temper. Out of sight, only in mind. Ballad of the Blind Beggar. End of Letter D. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Donald E. Bob, Davenport, Iowa, www.donnieboobb.com. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words. Section 5. E. A word to the wise is useless. Eagle. The national bird of a Christian country, the United States. Presumably chosen on account of its being a bird of prey. Earl. A title of nobility. Early. A title of stupidity. See old saw. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man a farmer. Earth. A solid substance much desired by the seasick. Echo. The only thing that can cheat a woman out of the last word. Economy. Denying ourselves a necessary today in order to build a luxury tomorrow. Egg. A wholesome yet foul product of no use until broken. Sometimes a cure for indigestion or bad acting. Election. A periodical picnic for the American people. Held in booths where the voter puts in his ballot and the machine elects whatever it chooses. A day when the lowliest may make their mark and even bakers may ride. When the glad mitts get promiscuous and everything is full, particularly the lodging houses. Encore. A greedy theatergoer's desire to get more than his money's worth. From the f French meaning among and cochon, pig, 
common among pigs. Engagement. In war, a battle. In love, the salubrious calm that precedes the real hostilities. Enthusiast. One who preaches four times as much as he believes, and believes four times as much as a sane man ought to. Epitaph. A statement that usually lies above about the one who lies beneath. Equator. An imaginary line around the earth, recently held by J.P. Morgan. Air. To make a mistake. Erratic. Full of mistakes. Ether. One of the world's three great composers, the others being gas and chloroform, whose airs are popular among the suffering. Etiquette. A convenient code of conduct which makes lying a virtue and snobbishness a righteous deed. Evolution. A clever trick performed by one Darwin who made a monkey of Adam. Excursion. From X former and GRK Cairo to enjoy. Hence, a tiresome journey, formerly enjoyment, sold at half price. Exercise. Bodily exertion requiring a $10,000 gymnasium, a 10-acre lot, and impossible raiment. Originally confined to the wash tub in the woodpile. Expansion. A combination of grand larceny and piracy involving the destruction of the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. Boston. The benevolent assimilation of previously oppressed peoples. Washington, D.C. A doubtful commercial experiment. Wall Street. The white man's burden. Kipling. Explosion. A good chance to begin at the bottom and work up. Exposition. An overgrown department store usually opened a year or two behind time. It's never too late to spend. End of E. Section 5. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Donald E. Bob, Davenport, Iowa, www.donnieboobb.com. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words. Section 6. Letters F and G. A bird on the plate is worth two on the bonnet. Face. A fertile, open expanse lying midway between collar button and scalp, and full of cheek, chin, and chatter. The crop of the male face is hair harvested daily by a lather, or allowed to run to mutton chops, spinach, or full lace curtains. The female face product is powder, whence the expression, shoot off your face. Each is supplied with lamps, snufflers, and bread boxes. Failure, the quickest method known for making money. Faint, a pugilist's bluff. Faint, a woman's bluff. Faith, a mental accomplishment whereby an earache becomes a symphony concert, a broken finger, a diamond ring, and a touch, an invitation to dine. Fake, a false report. Fakir, a false reporter. Fame, having a brand of cigars named after you. Family, originally a wife and several children, a matter of pride to the possessor. Now obsolete among the careful, or confined to the wife, a bull pup, and a canary bird. Fair, the cost of a ride. See old adage, only the brave can work their fare. Fault, about the only thing that is often found where it does not exist. Fiction, the constitutional fiat that all men are created equal. Fiddler. A violinist before he becomes the virtuoso who refuses to play a real tune. Firmness. The admirable quality in ourselves that is detestable stubbornness in others. Fig. Nothing. Note. I don't care a fig, etc. Fig leaf. A small outer garment next to nothing, worn by Adam 4000 BC and occasionally revived by Bostonian art committees. Fishing. A heroic treatment tried by some laymen to avoid falling asleep in church on Sunday. Flat. A series of padded cells commonly found in cities in which are confined harmless monomaniacs who imagine home to be a sardine box. Flattery. Cologne water to be smelled of but not swallowed. Flu. 
an escape for hot air. Fluency, the art of releasing the same. Flush, from Greek, phlox, heat. A rush of color to the cheek or hand caused by bodily or poker heat. Fly. A familiar summer boarder who mingles with the cream of society gets stuck on the butter and leaves his specks behind. Fly screen. An arrangement for keeping flies in the house. Foot. The understanding of a girl from the West. Footpath. Chicago, Illinois. Football. A clever subterfuge for carrying on prize fights under the guise of a reputable game. Foreigner. One who is eligible to the police force. From Greek, pharaoh, to carry off. And inara, spoils. One who carries off the spoils. Forbearance. The spirit of toleration shown when a man who knows patiently listens to a fool who does not. Frank. Twenty cents in French. Frankfurters, four for twenty in German, derived from frank, open, and fortitude meaning brave, sold in the open and eaten by the brave. Frost, an old flame after the engagement is broken off. Fun, joy. Function, devoid of joy. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. G, money makes the mayor go. Proverb is of politics. Gallon. From the French galonaire to make type. No, one is sufficient. Gallantry. This word is now almost obsolete. It was formerly employed to express a deferential attention on the part of the man who in a crowded car gave up his seat to the ladies. Gambler. From the Greek gumnos, stripped to the skin. And the gambler is the one that does it. Garden, from the French, garantir, to make good, hence a place where lovers make good. Garlic, from Greek gar, for, and Latin liceror, to bid, good for the biddies. Gem, a breakfast muffin, with a newly married synonym for a precious stone. Germ, a bit of animal life living in water. German, more animal life, living on beer. Giraffe, the champion rubberneck of the world and the longest thirst on record. Globe, an all-round proposition which has furnished its shareholders a living for several thousand years, though its stock is two-thirds water. Goat, the honored founder and oldest inhabitant of Harlem, New York, elsewhere not in good odor. Golf, an excuse for carrying unconcealed weapons and a scotch breath. Gondola, a pleasure craft which plies in Venice at World's Fairs and other popular watering places. From English, gone, and Latin, dolor, sadness, or English, dollar, sadness gone, also a gone dollar. Gore, blood, shed daily in Chicago abattoirs, but never spilled in French duels. Gossip, derived either from the Greek goops, vulture, or French gossier, windpipe. Hence, a vulture that tears its prey to bits, or an exercise of the windpipe from which every victim gets a blow. Gout, the undesirable scion of high living, which frequent the lowest joints and is mentioned only in an invalid's footnotes. Gown, from Latin gaudium, joy. A thing of beauty and a joy forever, if from Paris, generally an article of some worth. Gunpowder, a black substance much employed in marking the boundary lines of nations. Gum, a substance for sticking. Gum game, a game in which someone is stuck. Gutter, a school in which we may study the dregs of humanity or read the reflection of the stars. There's many a slip twixt the toe and the heel. End of section six. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how you can volunteer, 
Please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Nicole Doolin on the web at NicoleDoolin.com. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Wirtz. Letter H. Section 7. H. Where there's a will, there's a lawsuit. Hairdresser. A linguist whose position in life enables him to do his headwork with his hands. Hammer. A small, busy implement carried by blacksmiths, geologists, and knockers for breaking iron, rock, or friendship. Hammock. From the Latin, hamus, hook, and Greek, makar, happy, happiness on hooks, also a popular contrivance whereby lovemaking may be suspended but not stopped during the picnic season. Hand. A much desired possession, supplied by the damsel or the dealer. Glad hand. The beggar's plea, the politician's scepter, and the drummer's ablest assistant. Hand maiden. A manicure. Harangue. The tiresome product of a tireless tongue. From English, hear, and Latin, angor, pain, painful to hear. Harmony. From the Greek, arnumi, strain, hence, full of strains. Hash. Question mark. Hatch. To develop eggs. Hatchway. Place for developing eggs. A hen coop. Hay fever. A heart trouble caused by falling in love with a grass widow. Here, see. Seen on the dead. Hearsay. Heard on the dead. Hearse. A handsome vehicle in which the man who has always been a tail-ender is finally permitted to lead the procession. Heart. A bloody organ, kept in a trunk, played by beats, and enjoyed only after it is lost or given away. Heave. To raise. Heaven. A good place to be raised to. Hedge. A fence. Hedgehog. One who hogs the fences. A bill poster. Hell. Poverty, heredity, the cause of all our faults, from French here, wretch, and English ditty, song, the song of the wretched. Heroism, a transferable ticket to the Hall of Fame, once held by Hobson and Dewey, now carried by Mother Eddie and Brother Dowie. Hip. A popular location for the retail liquor business. History. The evil that men do. Hit. A chance for first place, first base, or first blood. Hawk. Verb. Transitive. To soak what we least need. In Germany, they generally hawk the Kaiser. Homeopathy. See allopathy. Hitman. The Scottish national hymn. Hop. To skip. Hopper. A skipper. Hope. A desire for better things to come that makes a grass widow willing to try it again. Also a draft on futurity. Sometimes honored, but generally extended. Horn. A sharp point. Hornet. Still sharper. Horse sense. A degree of wisdom that keeps one from betting on the races. Hose. Man's excuse for wetting the walk. Hosiery. A woman's excuse for walking in the wet. Hotel. A place where a guest often gives up good dollars for poor quarters. House cleaning. 
a domestic upheaval that makes it easy for the government to enlist all the soldiers it needs. Hug, a roundabout way of expressing affection. Humor, an outbreak, either of skin or brains, frequently branded as rash. Hunger, ability to eat in a night lunch cart. Husband, the next thing to a wife, from English hussy, woman, and bond, tie, tied to a woman. Hydrant, from Greek, hydros, water, and English anti, to give up, something that gives up water, a good synonym for dipsomaniac. Hypocrite, a horse dealer. From Greek, hippos, horse, and croteo, to beat, one who beats you on a horse trade. Home is where the mortgage is. End of letter H, section seven. Recorded by Nicole Doolin on the web at nicoledoolin dot com. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christian Nevac, Quebec City, Canada. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words, Section Eight, Letters I and J. I. Aim at a chorus girl, and you may hit a star. Stage door secrets. Ice, a substance frequently associated with a tumble in winter, a tumbler in summer, and a skate the year around. Iceman, a cool proposition who has access to the best families, makes his way in every home, and can take his pick in the kitchen. If he leaves his chips in the street, how do you like to be the ice man? Idiot, from English idea, and out, one who is just out of ideas. Idle, useless, idolize, to make useless. Impecunious, to be in a state of poverty, from English in, and Latin peco, to sin. Poverty being the greatest of all sins. Imperious, from English imp, devil, and Ariel, airy, airy as the devil. Incandescent light, from Latin, incendo to burn, and English cent, meaning money, an invention for burning money. Income. The reliable offspring of a wise investment, from Latin, in and coma, meaning sleep, money which works while you sleep. Independence, self-government, good enough for a Cuban, but too good for a Filipino. Indigestion, a distressing stomach trouble that is sometimes temporarily relieved by kicking the cat or whipping the children. Individuality, a harmless trait possessed by one self. The same trait in others is downright idiocy. Endorse, to write on the back of. The best endorsed man in town being the sandwich man. Infant, a disturber of the peace. Infantry, a defender of the peace. Inhabitant, a native of any village, town, or city. Oldest inhabitant, the champion liar. Intuition, a fictitious quality in females, really suspicion. Irritant, something which irritates. Counter irritant, a woman shopping. Island, a place where the bottom of the sea sticks up through the water. Isolation, from English, ice meaning cold, and Latin. Solus alone, alone in the cold. After dinner, sit a while, 
After supper, walk a mile. And every meal's a supper to the hobo. J. Lies have no legs. That's why we all have to stand for them. Jack. An instrument requiring a strong arm and used for raising heavy weights or for pulling off the boots. Jackpot. An instrument requiring a strong hand and used for raising heavy bets and for pulling off the stakes. Jag. From the Spanish word zaga, meaning a load packed on the outside of a van. In America, the load is packed on the inside of a man. Jam. A pantry composition in A minor. Janitor. From jangle, to quarrel, and torrid, meaning hot. Hot and quarrelsome. Jelly cake. Synonym for bellyache. Jersey. Well knit. New Jersey. Well bit. See mosquito. Jew's harp. From Jew, a Hebrew, and harp, a musical instrument. The Jew's musical instrument being a cello. Old spelling, C-E-L-L-O. Jimmy. An implement of employed by men of acquisitive natures who cannot afford seats in the stock exchange. Job, an uncertain commodity regulated by a union card. Jockey, from jog, to move slowly, and key, something that makes fast. Hence, one who makes the pace fast or slow according to instructions. Joint, either a low limb from the butcher, or a low quarter in town. In either case, the lower, the tougher. Joke. A form of humor enjoyed by some and misunderstood by most. In England, requiring a diagram, raised letters, and a club. Jolly. Verb. Transitive. To con or josh. Jolly boat. The ship of state. Judge. One who sits on a bench in a court, frames sentences, and finishes crooks for a living, and swears continually. Julep. An insidious friend from the south who hands you a mint and gives you a sweet spirit, followed shortly by a bun. Jury. Twelve men chosen to decide who has the better lawyer. Justice. Fair play, often sought but seldom discovered, in company with law. A chip of the old block, a daughter of the tenderloin. End of section 8. Letters I and J. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read and recorded by Catherine Eastman, www.stanford.edu, slash tilde, Seastman, June 27, 2006. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words, Section 9, K and L. K. One man's meat is another man's finish, canned beef in Cuba. Kangaroo, a hard drinker from Australia, especially fond of hops and generally carrying a load. Katie did, a gossiping grasshopper who was always meddling in Katie's affairs. Keepsake, something given us by someone we've forgotten. Kernels, K-E-R-N-E-L-S, or kernels. C-O-L-O-N-E-L-S Articles often found in cores C-O-R-E-S or cores C-O-R-P-S and frequently surrounded by shells. Kerosene An alleged provider of heat and light from Latin carus, meaning expensive and seneo to be weak, 
expensive but weak. For further explanation, consult Standard Oil Company. Keyhole, a frequent test for sobriety. Kid, either a boxing glove or a firstborn. In either case, hard to handle until well tanned. Kilts, a Scotchman's apology for indecent exposure. Kindred, from English kin, meaning relation, and dread, meaning fear, fearful relations. Kindergarten, from German kinder, children, and Latin garitus, a babbling, a place for babbling children. Kindling wood, from German kind, youth, and English linger, to loaf. A place where youth generally loafs. Kiss, nothing divided by two, meaning persecution for the infant, ecstasy for the youth, fidelity for the middle-aged, and homage for the old. Kiss, an indescribable something, that is of no value to any one, but is much prized by the right too. Knocker. A device on doors for rousing people. Also, a device on foot for the same purpose. Laugh in one's sleeve, the direct route to the funny bone. L. Two heads are better than one, particularly on a barrel of money. Lace. Among women, lace means lesson. Wherefore, they combine art and thrift by lessening the waist. Laconic, shy on words. From English, lack, meaning want, and connection. Want of connection. Lamp, a light. Lampened, to be lighted on. Lard, fat. Larder, a fattener. Lark, a short, sweet spree enjoyed by nighthawks. Also, an early rising singing bird. Distinction between out on a lark and up with the lark, an impossible combination. Lassie, one of the weaker sex. Lassitude, slightly weaker. Laud, praise for the Almighty. Laudanum, praise for himself after taking. Laundry, a place where clothes are mangled. Laugh, a peculiar contortion of the human countenance, voluntary or involuntary, superinduced by a concatenation of external circumstances seen or heard, of a ridiculous, ludicrous, jocose, mirthful, funny, facetious, or fanciful nature, and accompanied by a cackle, chuckle, chortle, cacination, giggle, gurgle, guffaw, or roar. Lawyer, one who defends your estate against an enemy in order to appropriate it to himself. Lecture, an entertainment at which it costs but little to look intelligent. Legislature, from Latin lego, to bring together, and latro, to bark or bluster, possibly from lex law and latens, unknown. Hence, a company of men brought together to bluster, or a company of lawmakers who know nothing about law. Leisure, from English, lazy and sure, assured laziness. Lent, a church fast that is slow to go, or something loaned which is slow to come back. Lie, a very poor substitute for the truth but the only one discovered up to date. Limburger, a native of Germany, strong enough to do housework, well recommended for cleaning out the dining room. Library, from French libre, meaning free, and proper name Andy, something free from Andy Carnegie. Links, found in sausages and golf courses, and both full of hazards. Lion, 
a cruel beast who never patronizes the barber and is always bearded in his den, yet will furnish a close shave if you get near enough. Lobster. The edible lobster is found off the New England coast. The two-legged species is found everywhere. All kinds are green, but when roasted turn a bright red. Soubrettes are very dependent on both varieties for a living. Together, they furnish her with food, raiment, flats, diamonds, and occasionally indigestion. Lobster Newberg, a dish ordered at hotels by those who usually get beans at home. Love, a man's insane desire to become a woman's meal ticket. Lover, an ardent admirer who says, Yes, dearest, I will shovel the snow of the lake so that we can go skating. And after marriage remarks, What, shovel the snow off the walk for you? Well, I should say not. I'm no chore boy. Hell is paved with good intentions. Also asbestos. End of the letters K and L. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words. Letters M and N. Hell is paved with good intentions. Also, asbestos. M. A fool and his wife are soon parted. C. Alimony. Magazine, a receptacle for explosives, literary or mechanical. Magnate, one who can float capital in a considerable body of water. From the Latin, magnus, great, and nator, to swim, a great swimmer. Maiden lady, a term applied to an old maid by those who wish to avoid hurting her feelings. Malt, a humble grain which often gets into a ferment, cools off and becomes stout in its old age. Man, something that goes first on four feet, then two, then three, but the more feet it goes on, the weaker it be. Man about town, one who is on speaking terms with the head waiter. Manicure, the only woman who can beat a carpenter at soaking nails. Manners, a difficult symphony in the key of B natural. Mark, in Germany, 23 cents. In the United States, only twain. Masculine, from the Greek. Maskos, girl. And euklos, easy. Easy for the girls. Massage, a touch, with intent to rub it in. Matrimony, a game for women in which the unmarried half are trying to find a husband and the married half trying not to be found by one. Both halves are eminently successful. Meal. According to the liquor laws, a minute bunch of crumbs entirely surrounded by booze. Medium. A party with one ear in the grave, but both hands on your wallet. Hello, central, give me heaven. Melodion. An alleged musical instrument, popular at home, but unpopular next door. From the English, melody. In the Latin, un, without, warranted without melody. Menagerie, from the French, melange, mixture, and the German, reichen, to smell, a mixture of smells. Messenger boy, from the English, miss, to fail. In the Latin, egno, to arrive, one who fails to arrive. Meter, the gas man's trysting place. Meter in the cellar. Mind, no matter. Matter, never mind. Mine, a hole in the ground owned by a liar. Minstrel, a footlight fowl that makes its nightly lay in every city. Miracle, a woman who won't talk. Mist, generally a small light rain. Scotch mist. A cloud burst. Mitten, something a tender-hearted girl gives a young man when she knows she is going to make it chilly for him. 
Money, society's vindiction of vulgarity. Monopoly, a modern device for impoverishing others. From the Greek, monux, swift, and poloi, the people. A swift kick for the people. Moon, the only lighting monopoly that never made money. Mortgage, from the French, mort, death, and the English, gag, to choke. A lawyer's invention for choking property to death. Mosquito, a small insect designed by God to make us think better of flies. Moth, an unfortunate acquaintance who is always in the hole. The only ones who try to get him out are his enemies. Mouse, the frequent cause of a rise in cotton. All gone to sixes and sevens. Ladies' footwear in Chicago. N. Time and tide wait for no man, but time always stands still for a woman of thirty. Nature. The author of The Seasons, an interesting work over which spring pours, summer smiles, and autumn turns the leaves while winter catches the drifts of it all. Neck. A close connection between chin and chest, used for the display of linen, silk, furs, jewelry, and skin, fitted with gullet, windpipe, hunger, and thirst, and devoted to the rubber industry. Negro, one who votes your way. Nigger, one who doesn't. Neighbor, one who knows more about your affairs than yourself. Nerve, breaking the hairbrush on the disobedient scion, then making him pay for a new one. See revised version, spare the rod and spoil the hairbrush. Next, the barbarous password to the heaven of the shaved and the unshaved. Nip, something bracing from without or within. When felt in the air, it's a frost. When found in a glass, a lifesaver. Nobility, a gang of foreign brigands having abducent designs on the American damsel and the American dollar. Non-conductor, the motorman. Nose, a prominent member of the face family, usually a Greek or Roman, who owns the shortest bridge in the world. He is often struck up in company, but frequently blows himself when he has his gripe. Principal occupations, Sniffling, sniveling, sneezing, snorting, and scenting, intruding in the neighbor's affairs, stuffing himself without permission, and bleeding for others. Note, promissory. The substance of things long hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Novel, a fabric that is often knit in print. Though the yarn be well spun. Nurse, one who keeps setting up the drinks after you're all in. End of letters M and N. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Wirtz. Letters O and P. Out of the frying pan and into the face. Mother's Donuts. O. Many hands make light work. Also, a good jackpot. Or, a popular device for catching crabs. Oats. England's horse feed, America's breakfast, and Scotland's table to oat. Oath. A form of speech that has many trials in court, but is never tried in Sunday schools. Obesity. A surplus gone to waste. Ocean. An old toper who is always soaked, has many a hard night along the coast, floats many a schooner, Lashes himself into a fury because so frequently crossed. And has his barks in every port. At sea, the king of the elements. On shore, a mere surf. Oleo margarine. The white bread's burden. From the English, oleo, a mixture. And the Greek, margano, to be furious. A furious mixture. Omnibus. A test for patience. Still popular in England. From the Greek, oneros, dream, and bino, to go or move, a dream of motion. Onion, 
the all-around strength champion of the vegetable kingdom, garlic and cabbage being close rivals. Opera, a drama that has taken on airs and refuses to speak, yet always sings its own praises. Grand opera, an excuse for displaying several boxes of jewelry and peaches with pedigree. Opinion, the prodigal son of thought. Public opinion, the world's champion pugilist who has knocked out law in many a hard-fought bout. Opium, the real author of the dream book. Optimism, a cheerful frame of mind that enables a tea kettle to sing, though in hot water, up to its nose. Orchard, the small boy's Eden of today, in which the apple again occasions the fall. Ostrich, the largest and heaviest bird on earth, yet rated by his owners only as a featherweight. Outskirts, the only garments which clothe many a metropolis with decency. Oven, the only sport who enjoys an equally hot time with or without the dough. Handsome is what handsome changes. P. Soap, long deferred, maketh the dirt stink. Pain, a sensation experienced on receiving a punch, particularly the London one. Palmistry, a plausible excuse for holding hands. Pants, trousers country cousins. Parachute, a successful method for getting the drop on the earth. Paragon, the model man a woman regrets she gave up for the one she mistakenly married. Parents, the one of the hardships of a minor's life. Pass, a form of transportation issued free to those who are quite able to pay. Passenger, one who does not travel on a pass. Antonym for deadhead. From the English, pass, to go, and the Greek, endidomi, to give up. One who has to give up to go. Parrot, an individual who can never be held responsible for what he says. Pastry, a deadly weapon carried by cafes, cooks, and newly married housekeepers. Parrot, one who is willing to take all of Uncle Sam's bonds in a lump. Pawn, verb, transitive, to keep property in the family by leaving it all with your uncle. Pawn broker, a mercenary man to whom money is the one redeeming quality. Peace, a mythical condition of tranquility frequently reported from the Philippines. Peach, a popular synonym for fair woman, probably because the peach is largely a skin and stony at heart. Pearl, a small round product manufactured by an oyster, bought by a lobster, and worn by a butterfly. Penitent, from pen, meaning to write, and intent, meaning one who determines for the right. Pessimist, one who paints things blue and sometimes red. Philistine, in Bible times, one who worried the children of Israel. Today, one who worries only himself. From the Greek, phylos, bark, and tino, to punish. One who barks to punish. Philanthropist, one who returns to the people publicly a small percentage of the wealth he steals from them privately. Philosopher, one who instead of crying over spilt milk consoles himself with the thought that it was over four-fifths water. Philosophy, something that enables the rich to say there is no disgrace in being poor. Piano, a tool frequently used in building a rough house. Pin, the best dresser in a woman's acquaintance, of remarkable penetration, and true as steel, seldom loses its head, follows its own bent, and carries its point in whatever it undertakes. Ping pong, a game invented for the benefit of furniture and crockery dealers. Pity, an emotion awakened in a man's mind when he beholds the children of a woman who might have married him instead. Platonic love, an arrangement in which a man and woman attempt a correct imitation of a pair of icicles, and never succeed. Plenty, a desirable condition that is likely to step out whenever extravagance steps in. Plum, a fruit that ripens and falls from the political tree, but only after carefully grafting. Plum, to ascertain the capacity of. Plumber, 
one who ascertains the capacity of your purse, soaks you with a piece of lead, and gets away with the money, a process vulgarly known as a lead pipe cinch. Polecat, a small animal to be killed with a pole. The longer the pole, the better. Policeman, a never-present help in time of trouble. Polygamy, a thoughtless way of increasing the family expense. Polyglot, a parrot that can swear in several languages. Postscript, the only thing readable in a woman's letters. Pretzel, the barkeeper's promoter. Protection, originally the swaddling clothes of the infant industry, now merely the shoelacings for the giant. Monopoly, pro and con, prefixes of opposite meaning. For example, progress and congress. Prude, a native of Boston. Prudence, a quality of mind that restrains the wise border from trying to find out how his landlady makes her hash. Prudery, the quality that displays a lack of modesty, as a wig does, a loss of hair. Prune, a plum that has seen better days. The boarding house veteran and the landlady's pet, badly wrinkled, yet well preserved. Pugilist, a close-fisted party who is often roped in but never gives up till he's out. Pullman Porter, a legalized train robber. Punch, a weekly obituary notice from London, chronicling the death of humor. End of the letters O and P. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kelly Bechair of Mattapoisett, Massachusetts. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words. Section 12. Letters Q and R. Q. Charity begins at home, but ends when you reach the cook. Quack. The duck family's favorite physician. Quail. Verb. Transitive. To shrink. A characteristic of the bird when ordered in a restaurant. Queen. One entitled to rule a nation, make up a deck, or beat a knave. Question. Is marriage a failure? Q. The only Mongolian line connecting America and China. Quorum. A clumsy individual, all eyes and nose, who is seldom on hand when needed. Faint heart never won fair lady, but a full purse can always pull the trick. Letter R. Man proposes, then woman imposes. Rabbit. A small rodent, very similar to a hare, which feeds on grass and burrows in the earth. Welsh rabbit, more like a string, thrives on cheese and burrows in the stomach. Racetrack. An interesting locality where pools are bought and sold in books, and the heat never interferes with the search for the pole. Radium. A radiant radiator, redolent of ranging radial rays of radioactivity, raised to radical rates and regarded as a ruthless break-off in the reign of riches within the arrayed radius of a raging, raving, and raided race. Ragtime. Music pulled into many pieces. The invention of a flannel mouth to which many have cottoned. Rapid transit. A municipal myth circulated for the amusement of the long-suffering and slow-moving public. Reform. In general, a periodic epidemic, started with market heat, followed by a high fever and accompanied by a flow of ink in the newspapers, a discharge of words from the face, and a rush of blood to the polls, leaving the victim a chronic invalid until the next campaign. In New York, reform has been confined to a low attempt at government. Reformer. One who, when he smells a rat, is eager to let the cat out of the bag. Register. The only autograph album which it costs you money to write in. Regrets. An excuse for non-attendance at a social function. Occasionally, an expression of sorrow. Usually, a paean of praise at deliverance from evil. 
relations, a tedious pack of people who haven't the remotest knowledge of how to live, nor the smallest instinct about when to die. Religion, a cloak used by some persons in this world who will be warm enough without one in the next. R. E. Morse, a veteran general who, who commands the largest army in the world. Repartee, the sassy habit of talking back. Reputation, personal possession, frequently not discovered until lost. Residence, a rural locality inhabited annually for a few hours by a rich New Yorker or Bostonian. Resolution, a fragile bit of crockery fashioned on the first day of January and usually broken on the second. Resort, summer, a place where the tired grow more tired. From English rest and Greek orizo, to limit. A place where rest is limited. Rest, a trade in which every hobo holds a union card for life. Restaurant, an institution for the spread of dyspepsia. From Latin restoro, to repair, and Greek anti, against. After patronizing, you're up against repairs. Rhetoric, language in a dress suit. Rice, an effective field piece used for assaulting Chinamen or the newly married. Roquefort, a kind of cheese whose odor puts it easily in the first rank. Roy Crofter, a successful bookmaker on the East Aurora turf. From French, raw, king, and Old Saxon crofter, or grafter. King of grafters. Rumor, the long-distance champion of the human race. A monster with more tails than an octopus. Rust. Physical dullness. Rustic. Mental dullness. Beggars should never be choosers, though the beggar often choose what he begs. End of section 12. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kelly Becher, Oisit, Massachusetts. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words. Section 13. The Letter S. A miss is as good as her smile. Sad, you see. A person holding skeptical religious views. Hopeless, hence, sad, you see. Sailor, a man who makes his living on water, but never touches it on shore. Sandwich, an unsuccessful attempt to make both ends meet. Sausage, an aftermath of the dog days. Scaffold, a work of art that rarely fails to get a hanging. Scarecrow, an operator who repeatedly corners corn without cause. Scorcher, a chauffeur in all fired hurry. Sculptor, a poor unfortunate who makes faces and busts. Self made, complimentary term for a respectable crook. Shamrock, a three time loser as a racer at sea, but a four time winner as an ad for tea and sir tea. Shepherd, one who depends on a crook for a living. Shirt, every man's bosom friend. Silver, a metallic form of opium smoked by presidential impossibilities. Sinner, a stupid person who gets found out. Snap, a brisk, energetic quality that enables a man with ginger to take the cake. Snore, an unfavorable report from headquarters. Cirrhosis, a female gas company that lays its pipes on cultivated grounds. Spaghetti, a table dish eaten only by Italians and jugglers. From Latin, spadix, branch or fork, and gestamen, burden, a burden for the fork. Spider, a busy weaver and a good correspondent who drops a line by every post. Stars, the greatest astronomers known, having studied the heavens for ages. Stays, a sort of straitjacket employed in reforming women. 
Stockings, woman's only savings for a rainy day. Stocks, an unreliable commodity bought and sold by gamblers. If you win, it's an investment. If you lose, a speculation. Stovepipe, a movable cylinder used as, as a receptacle for smoke and profanity. Spring, formerly a very delightful season, but now obsolete except in poetry and the old farmer's almanac. Spinster, an ember from which the sparks have flown. Subway, in Boston, a place where one may enjoy continuous disturbance of the peace, disorderly conduct, assault and battery, riot and rebellion. These events are allowed by law, and the entry fee is five cents. Success, a goal usually reached by those who employ their time in cultivating a more definite aim in life rather than in searching for a larger target. Summer, an oppressive and expensive season invented by rural cottage and hotel owners, railroad and steamboat companies, and the icemen. Sun, a yellow arrival from way down east who goes west daily, operates a heating and lighting trust, draws water, prints pictures, develops crops, liquidate, liquidates the ice business, and tans skins on the side, profits by his daily rays, and always has a shine. Sympathy, feeling for others very noticeable in blind man's buff. Syndicate, a conspiracy to extend the modest business established by Captain Kidd. Fortune knocks only once at a man's door, and she is the worst knocker in the world. End of section 13. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Wirtz. The Letter T. Fortune knocks only once at a man's door, and she's the worst knocker in the world. T. Brevity is the soul of wit, and the sole charm of a bicycle skirt. Taylor, one who takes your measure on first sight, gives you a fit, sews you up, and follows suit until paid. Talk, a continuous performance playing daily and nightly engagements, with woman as the star and man confined in the family circle. Telegram, a form of correspondence sent by a man in a hurry and carried by a boy in sleep. Telephone, from the English, tell, to talk and the Greek, phonos, murder, a machine in which talk is murdered. Tennis, a game in which the participants enjoy a racket on the side and raise the deuce over a net, while the volleys drive them from set to set and love scores as often as it's mentioned. Temper, a quality, the loss of which is likely to make a knife blade dull and a woman's tongue sharp. Thermometer, a short glass tube that regulates the weather, and usually does a poor job. Thirst, a sensation immediately following a short session at the free lunch stand. Tide, an old friend who comes and goes daily, but is all in whenever he gets over the bay. Titan, the color a poor red-headed girl's hair becomes as soon as her father strikes oil. Tips, wages we pay other people's hired help. Tobacco, a nauseating plant that is consumed by but two creatures, a large green worm, and man. The worm doesn't know any better. Tongue, an unruly member that is frequently put out, yet an artist who is a hard worker at the palate and a great wag among women. Touch, a habit common to the impecunious, causing, in its victim, a feeling of faintness followed by a chill or a sense of loss. Transfer, a small bit of paper of remarkable strength, being able to carry a heavy man several miles. Trolley car, a conveyance filled with advertisements and occasionally passengers and operated by poles. Trouble, something that many are looking for but no one wants. Trust, a small body of capital entirely surrounded by water. Twins, insult added to injury. Twisters, an undesirable thing to have on hand. 
end of T. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Wirtz. The letters U through Z. It's a wise son who can get two birds with one bone. U and V. There is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. But most of us catch our watered stock on the ebb. Umbrella. A good thing to put up in a shower or pawn shop, but like skating, never seen after Lent. Unbosomed. A shirt just returned from a steam laundry. Union. An ailing individual frequently troubled by scabs and liable to strike without warning. Umpire. No jeweler, but a high authority on diamonds. Usher. One who takes a leading part in a theater. Vaccination. Where jabbing the needle is never a vice. Vaudeville, from the Latin vaut, good for, and villagius, countryman, good for countrymen. Veranda, an open air enclosure often used as a spoon holder. Vest, a waistcoat sold at half price. Virtue, a quality oftentimes associated with intelligence but rarely with beauty. Vulgarity, the conduct of others. A rolling stone gathers no moss, except at roulette. W, but a stony roll always gathers the same stony stare. Waiter, an inexperienced servant. War, a wholesale means of making heroes which, if planned in a small way, would produce only murderers. Water, a thin substance applied to stocks with which to soak buyers. Wedding, a trade in which the bride is generally given away and the groom is often sold. Weeds, found in gardens and widows, for removing easily marry the widow. Wickedness, a myth invented by good people to account for the singular attractiveness of others. Widow, the wife of a golfer during the open season, unless she golfs too. In that event, the children are golf orphans. Whiskey, trouble put up in liquid form. Wind, an aerial phenomenon superinduced by an ephemeral agitation of the nebular strata, whereby air, hot or cold, impelled into transitory activity, generates a prolonged passage through space, owing to certain occult ethereal stimuli and results in zephyrs, breezes, blows, blowouts, blizzards, gales, simoons, hurricanes, tornadoes, or typhoons, barred from Kansas cyclone cellars, but frequently blended with Chicago tongue, canned or conversational. Woman, an aspiring creature whose political sphere is still slightly flattened at the poles. Word, something you must keep after giving it to another. Worry, a state of mind that leads some persons to fear every time the tide goes out that it won't come in again. Wrinkles, a merchant's trademarks. It's the first straw hat which shows how the wind blows. X, Y, and Z. A ride goeth before the fall. C, automobile, bucking bronco, bicycle, airship, patrol wagon, rail, and go-cart. X-rays, ten dollars from a friend. Yarn, an essential in fabrication, either woven or narrated. Mill yarns are highly colored, those spun at sea, much more so. Yawl, either the shape of a boat or the sound of a cat, but never a cat boat. Yawns, the air breaks on a sleeper. Year, a period originally including 365 days, now including 325, since the other 40 are Lent. Yellow fever, a passion for reading the Hearst newspapers. Yolk, the legacy of the hen and the burden of its lay. 
yoke, the inheritance of the hen pecked and the burden of the married. Yule log, a Christmas protege of the great, too young to smoke, too tough to burn, and too green to warm up to anybody. Youth, the dynamo that makes the world go round, a product of its own generation, with its wires carrying power into the high places of earth, and with its currents of thought short-circuited only by bigoted old age. Zealot, one who loves morality so well he will commit crime to maintain it. Zebra, the crook among horses, condemned to wear stripes for life. Zero, originally nothing, but now meaning a good deal on a thermometer or bank draft, in comprising two-thirds of the four hundred. Zigzag, the popular route after a heavy dinner, old adage, the longest way round is the drunkard's way home. Zawave, the original Mrs. Bloomer. End of the letters U through Z. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kristen Hughes. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words. Postage and Postal Information. How to Mail a Letter. After writing it, place it in a square or oblong envelope. Round ones are no longer fashionable. Seal it on the back and write a legible address on the front. Then take a two-cent stamp, give it a good licking, and retire it to the corner. The upper right-hand corner. On the outside, never inside, as the postmaster is not a clairvoyant. Drop it in a letter box and trust to luck. If it's a love letter, it will probably reach her all right, for Cupid is a faithful postman and carries a stout pair of wings. If it is a bill, by all means have it registered. Otherwise your debtor will swear he never got it. If it's cash for your tailor, heed the post office warning. Don't send money through the mails. Wait until you happen to meet him on the street. If he sees you first, you lose. First-class matter. Anything you are ashamed to have the postmaster or postmistress read, and therefore seal up, is known as first-class matter. Also, postal cards, where you're only allowed to argue on one side. If you think your letter should travel slowly, invest ten cents in a special delivery stamp. This will ensure a nice, leisurely journey, lasting from one to two days longer than by the cheap two-cent route. Second Class Matter This class was originated for the benefit of patent medicine mixers, who print circulars on what ails you four times a year, and pepper the land with before and after taking caricatures at the rate of one cent a pound. Third class matter. While the quack nostrums travel second class for one cent a pound, books, engravings, manuscript copy, and works of art have to go third class and are taxed one cent for every two ounces. They must also be left open for inspection, thus affording the post office employee a fleeting acquaintance with something really useful. Fourth class matter. Everything not included in the above, except poisons, explosives, live animals, insects, inflammable articles, and things giving off a bad odor. The last two do not include the police gazette or the Philistine. End of postage and postal information. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words Section 17 A Few Mythological and Classical Names Brought down to date in brief notes by the editor. Achilles, a courageous Greek who did a general slaughtering business in Troy in 1180 B.C., 
but was finally pinked in the heel, his only vulnerable spot, and died. Long life often depends on being well healed. Adonis, a beautiful youth, beloved by Venus, and killed by a boar. Boars have been the death of us ever since. Bacchus, a brewer who supplied the gods with nectar, the beer that made Olympus famous. Those desiring a drink, please ask Dickens if Bacchus is willin'. Castor and Pollux, two clever sports and twin brothers from Greece, Castor being a horse trainer, and Pollux a pugilist, whose sister, Helen, a respectable married woman, disgraced the family by eloping with Paris. Just because a man can break a bronco or win a prize fight, it's no sign he can manage a woman. Cerberus a dog with three heads, a serpent's tail, and several snakes around his neck, who guarded the main entrance to Hades. When a man begins to see snakes, and one head looks like three, it's a scent she's not far from hell. Charon, the gloomy gondolier of the Styx, who carried the dead to the other world, if they paid him first. And, even today, he who patronizes rapid transit must pay his fare in advance. Cupid, the son of Venus and the god of love, who with bow and arrows punctured men's bosoms with darts of admiration. But nowadays the arrow's not in it with a snug bathing suit or a décolleté gown. Daedalus, the original Santos Dumont, who invented and successfully operated a flying machine that would fly. His son, Icarus, tried the trick, went too high, and fell into the sea. A flyer frequently precedes a fall, especially in Wall Street. Diana, the goddess of the chase, unmarried, and this is very fitting, may the chase always be for the unmarried only. Hercules, the gritty Greek, no relation to the terrible Turk, an independent laborer who always had a good job awaiting him. It is interesting to recall the days when non-union labor had all the work it wanted. Ixion, a king of Thessaly, who, for his sins, was broken on a wheel, and men have been going broke on the wheel ever since. Lotus Eaters, a gang of ancient vegetarians who chewed leaves and went to sleep. Now succeeded by a club of New Yorkers who chew the rag and keep awake. Mercury, a celestial messenger boy who wore wings on his shoes and knew how to get there in a hurry. Now they all wear hobbles and never exceed the speed limit in a public thoroughfare. Midas, a Greek king who had the power of turning into gold all that he touched. <laughs> That's nothing. There are plenty of men today who always get gold, whoever they touch. Sappho, a love-lorn poetess who, failing to win the man she first loved, cured herself by jumping into the Mediterranean. She probably acted on the old advice there's plenty more fish in the sea. Tantalus, a proud king who suffered in Hades the agonies of hunger and thirst, with food and drink always in sight, but always beyond reach. Here on earth the fifty-cent table d'hôte accomplishes the same result, besides costing you the fifty. Troy, an ancient oriental city, which took in a wooden horse and saw the domestic finish of Helen and Paris. Do not confuse with Troy, New York, where they only take in washing and provide a domestic finish for collars and shirts. And Vulcan, 
the Olympian blacksmith who always had his hammer with him. But not all who carry hammers are blacksmiths. End of section 17. Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California for LibriVox. Summer 2005. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words Section 18 Legal and Local Holidays in the United States January 1st, New Year's Day. On this day, the flowing bowl is filled, and emptied, and the genial palm circulated in 43 states and territories out of 49. In Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and the Indian Territory, there is no celebration. The natives are too busy collecting good resolutions, and bad bills. February 22nd. Washington's birthday, George, not Booker, is remembered in 38 of the states. On this day, in the public schools, are shown pictures of George chopping down the cherry tree and breaking up the Delaware Ice Trust, Valley Forge in winter, and Mount Vernon on a busy day. The pride of the class recites Washington's farewell to the army. Many the spieler belabors the piano with the Washington Post march, and the scholars all eat Washington pie, made of Columbia, the jam of the ocean. March 17th, St. Patrick's Day and Evacuation Day, when the British Redcoats got out of Boston and Patrick evicted the snakes from Ireland. For observing the day, wear a turkey red coat or vest and put a bit of green ribbon or a shamrock in the buttonhole the green above the red on easter day wear a scrambled egg in the same place april nineteenth patriots day a new england successor to fast day the slowest day of the year originally invented for fasting and prayer now used exclusively for opening the baseball season. Locating a seashore home for the summer, and watching red-shirted Diogenes at his tub. Little drops of water, little lines of hose, make the mighty muster, as every laddie knows. May 1st, Moving Day, observed everywhere by the Restless Tenant. April 26th and May 30th, Memorial Days in Dixie and in the North, a symphony in blue and gray. June 17th, Bunker Hill Day, celebrated in Boston, Massachusetts by a procession of the ancient and horrible distillery company, a few of the city fathers in hacks, a picked bunch of Navy Yard sailors, and occasionally a few samples from a Wild West show. For twenty-four hours, pistols and firecrackers are allowed to mutilate young America ad lib. July 4th, Independence Day, a national holiday, invented for the benefit of popcorn and peanut promoters, tin horn and toy balloon vendors, lemonade chemists, dealers in explosives, physicians and surgeons. A grand chance for the citizen soldier to hear the roar of battle, smell powder, shoot the neighbor's cat, and lose a night's rest, or a finger. Labor Day, first Monday in September, the only day when labor works overtime. An occasion when the working man takes a cane in place of a dinner pail, and proudly stamps the streets behind a real silk banner and a hod carrier on a cart horse. Thanksgiving Day, last Thursday in November, a day devoted to the annual division of Turkey, 
with Greece on the side, by the hungry folks. December 25th, Christmas Day. Another national holiday marked by the following observances. Filling the young and helpless with a lot of fiction about Santa Claus, the old chimney faker who went up the flue long ago. Making a clothesline of the mantelpiece and robbing the forest of its young. Swapping several things we'd like to keep for a lot of stuff we don't want. And finally, putting on in church a Sunday night performance of light opera known as the Sabbath School Concert. End of Section 18 and The End of the Foolish Dictionary by Gideon Words Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California, Summer 2005 for LibriVox